before diving in, this video will be available ad-free on Locals.com to monthly subscribers. It's a Patreon alternative for $5 a month, and I'm working directly with them to develop a community there. There will also be an audio-only podcast version of the video, but I'd like to stress that the script is the same, the video is the same, it's just ad-free or audio-only. So if you'd like to support with various other bonuses as well, click the link down below and become a monthly supporter on Locals.com. Call of Duty is no stranger to controversy, even if that controversy typically becomes a banal or unimpressive shadow of its former self on launch day. However, this year Activision Blizzard is swinging for the absolute fences, and also hastily correcting themselves under the inevitable pressure. I myself covered the recent Cold War trailer, highlighting what can only be described as a chilling comparison between decades-old warning lectures from a KGB defector named Yuri Bezmenov, featured in the trailer, and the current socio-political atmosphere of activism in the United States. But today, we need to look at another response from the esteemed publication, Kotaku. Ian Walker, a staff writer at the outlet, writes the following headlined article. Call of Duty trailer recklessly promotes far-right conspiracy theory. For the sake of time and intellectual sanity, honestly, I will read only the most relevant sections, but I will also link to an archived version of the article down below in the description. Quote, the teaser, which was released last week to hype up the more recent reveal, intersperses stock footage of major world events with a 1984 interview of Bezmenov, who claimed to have been an informant for the KGB before defecting to the United States. During the interview, he describes the Soviet Union's alleged use of active measures that, in theory, are meant to destabilize opponents without direct military conflict by way of changing a society's power structure and economy. In short, Bezmenov's suggestion in the full interview is that extending equality to the United States' non-white, non-male population made it ripe for Soviet invasion. So right off the bat, this is a very large misnomer. That is not entirely accurate, and in truth, it is a disingenuous reduction of what he stated, which assumes that calling someone a useful idiot, which he did say, who can be manipulated in their journey to a social goal, is a condemnation of their right to be treated as an equal. That is factually untrue. Someone can be a useful idiot ripe for manipulation, that can absolutely be true, while also pursuing a goal that is perfectly legitimate. These two things are not mutually exclusive. Reading on. Quote, the person interviewing Bezmenov in the footage is far-right conspiracy theorist G. Edward Griffin, who has since made a name for himself in HIV slash AIDS denialism and alt-right recruitment. As a member of the John Birch Society, a famously anti-communist organization focused on establishing a more conservative government in the United States, it makes sense that Griffin would peddle Bezmenov's claims about Soviet interference by way of social progress without any critical analysis. In the Call of Duty trailer, Activision presents Bezmenov's words bereft of this important context. Similar to the paragraph prior, this is a false connection to draw. A man can be interviewed by someone who is unsavory, even conspiratorial and, frankly, evil, it still would not matter, while simultaneously stating things that are true or valuable to explore. The man interviewing Yuri Bezmenov during the segment that was utilized receives no screen time, no name recognition, and genuinely has no presence whatsoever, but the mere fact that the interviewer had a dissatisfactory political ideology with conspiratorial beliefs is being used to discredit the interviewer. Interviewee. As an easy example, a conservative can go on CNN and make claims that align with a Republican mindset, and those claims or personal positions are not de facto worthless because the interviewer is a liberal host. Likewise, an espoused Democratic ally or politician could go on Fox News, and it does not discredit what they say simply because the host is deemed by certain ideological and political circles to be unsavory, conspiratorial, or even dangerous. The interviewer has no relevance here. The words of the one speaking, the one in the trailer, those do matter. Reading on, the buzzwords start to take center stage. Quote, While Bezmenov's warnings seem like obvious fodder for amping up that conflict in the game, his appearance in the game's advertisement has functioned as a sort of dog whistle to legions of reactionaries who consider attempts at establishing social equity to be proof of a far-right conspiracy theory known as cultural Marxism. End quote. Somehow, as is true with many contemporary journalistic personalities, Ian manages to connect all of it to Gamergate. Quote, the term more recently gained popularity in gaming circles thanks to, what else, Gamergate. The specter of cultural Marxism is routinely conjured to decry anything that doesn't adhere to the straight, white, cis male perspective, again with that man, that has dominated the video game industry for decades, such as the introduction of playable female characters in Battlefield 5 and LGBTQ plus representation in The Last of Us Part 2, end quote. 
This is where a clearly defined transformation occurs. Instead of debating the merits of Yuri Bezmenov's testimony as a KGB defector, we have transitioned to an attack vector against Gamergate and those that spoke out against various aspects of two particular video games. Battlefield 5 was touted as the most immersive battlefield yet, and then had amputee female British commando super soldiers parkouring all across the trailer. The issue was not one of equity or equality. It was one of marketing message versus final product. Had the game stated a fantastical and fictional take on World War II, the discourse would have been completely different. As for The Last of Us 2, this is a complete fabrication. The vast majority of criticism, after final release anyways, was oriented around key story beats and character treatment decisions, as well as a forced aspect of gameplay perspective, not around the inclusion of sexual identity. In fact, you would be hard pressed to find anyone in the mainstream critical sector of review coverage who even mentions sexuality as a defining factor in the game. The one character who truly pushes those boundaries, if you will, is the most forgettable character in years, and Ellie was already established and accepted for her identity well in advance of the game itself. All in all, this is manufactured dissent. Disagree with a nearly non-existent adversary to strawman a point that does not even relate to the subject of the article, which is Yuri Bezmenov. For the sake of time, I'll speed things up here. The writer moves on to attack Sargon of Akkad, calling him far-right, bringing up a past political run he undertook for British Parliament, as well as controversies he faced along the way. It also draws parallels to a notable criminal with a 1,500-page manifesto on his motivations for the execution of an atrocious crime, and towards the end, we find the following paragraph. Quote, that's not to say that Call of Duty publisher Activision is free of these kinds of gaffes, intentional or not. This is the same series that, for example, hired Oliver North as an advisor on 2012's Black Ops 2. North, formerly a Fox News host and president of the National Rifle Association, is a controversial figure in American politics. He earned the national spotlight in 1986 as a key figure in the Iran-Contra affair, which saw the United States covertly sell weapons to Iran in order to fund right-wing death squads in Nicaragua as a way of destabilizing that country's elected socialist government. North also made a cameo appearance in the game itself. When interviewed by Kotaku in 2012, Black Ops 2's developer hand-waved away concerns about North's involvement." End quote. This is where it all falls apart. The entire thing falls flat on its face like a toddler at full speed stepping on a banana peel. This is the wily coyote of journalism that winds up with Scooby-Doo type energy and then slams headfirst into a hand-painted tunnel on the side of a cliff face. And I am honestly baffled that a staff writer at a major publication can produce this kind of work without seeing front and center the blatant and unmissable contradictions at play. Oliver North is indeed a controversial character in American politics, that much is obviously true, but recall the title of this article. Call of Duty trailer recklessly promotes far-right conspiracy theory. That conspiracy is active measures, or more precisely, governmentally backed social subversion of a country and its economic or military stability. The article then uses an example of a controversial figure consulting on a previous iteration of the Call of Duty franchise who executed governmentally backed subversion of a country by way of arming its people to destabilize its socialist government. This is not identical, far from it, however, subversion of stability does occur at the highest levels of government all around the world each and every day. Yuri Bezmenov was discussing the very real tactics employed by the Soviet Union with that precise goal as it pertained to the United States at the time. The real conspiracy theory, which has highly potent evidence to generate skepticism on its behalf, by the way, is that these tactics are just now coming to fruition. I did a video on this very subject recently, which correlates the self-professed trained Marxism of the Black Lives Matter political movement, the open call for the complete abolition of history education in Illinois by Democratic politicians, and a rift between law enforcement and the general populace, which I will link that down below. That can be called a conspiracy theory, if one so chooses, but the idea that active measures in the governmentally executed subversion of enemy forces would in any world be conspiratorial is laughable at best. This writer proved himself wrong in two diametrically opposing paragraphs. On the one hand, Yuri Bezmenov is bad, and he hates minorities, and the person interviewing him is bad, and gamers are bad, and these two games got hate because Gamergate is bad. But on the other, here is an example of a guy on our side who executed subversion of government by manipulating and arming the population to overthrow an ideology. But Bezmenov's version, that's a conspiracy theory. With final emphasis, all the floodgates open. Quote, 
There is no Jewish plot to destabilize America by burning bras or marching for equal rights. Our society won't crumble because kids are told it's okay to be gay. But in publicizing Besmanov this way, with little criticism or scrutiny of the far-right sensibilities his nonsensical worldview invigorates, Activision has given its fans a direct path to his philosophy, while also leaving out crucial contextual details that explain its origins and the dangerous effects it's already had on the modern world." End quote. This is what we call arguing with a ghost. This is the equivalent to hearing a bump in the night, going downstairs with a baseball bat, seeing a raccoon in your trash can, and then telling your neighbors, I got brutally robbed last night. Nowhere is the argument made that Jews are trying to destabilize America by burning bras and marching for equal rights. Cities burn in America right now. The media won't show you. They desperately want to preserve the image of this movement as an ideologically pure awakening. But crime is rampant. Violence is compounding. And harmlessly burning bras or marching in the street peacefully have become the antithesis of what modern American political activism entails. Kotaku set out with a mission, condemn Yuri Bezmenov at all costs and attack this trailer. They pursued that goal with such ferocity to the point of blatant self-contradiction, while bouncing between buzzwords and secondary unrelated topics like a ping pong ball in Forrest Gump. There are arguments to be made against the messages that Yuri Bezmenov proclaimed, absolutely. There are arguments to be made against Activision Blizzard itself, to be sure, such as how the official two-minute trailer was removed within hours, by the way, and a modified version put up which no longer contained footage of the Tiananmen Square tragedy because China executed a ban. However, if you examine the article for what it is, rather than what it could be, we see a microcosm of the larger sentiment, which is that Yuri Bezmenov is a conspiracy theorist, unworthy of attention and promotion, all the while citing controversy that disproves the idea that his lectures on active measures and ideological or governmental subversion are some sort of conspiracy. Journalism has had a kind of rough go of it lately, and this definitely does not make it better. But that's it. If you want to support, there are links down below. Again, audio version and ad-free upload on Locals.com, another gaming YouTuber to support as well, merch, Twitter, etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.